we moved in 13 years ago, the yard was all grass, um, which is non-native, not very supportive of wildlife. Um, and we made a decision to try to take over as much grass as we could with native plants and wildlife friendly, non-native, non-invasive plants so that we could create a habitat for birds and insects that the birds eat and butterflies and it's been a work in progress. When you garden for wildlife, they actually return the favor. They actually come and drop a lot of seeds from other native plants. So I've had a lot of nice discoveries over the years that wildlife have planted for me. Often when I see something coming up that I don't understand or I haven't seen before, I wait and I try to identify it on the web or in a book or something. And it usually turns out to be a native um, that would have been mowed down if I hadn't, hadn't looked. In fact, the milkweed patch over there started with one milkweed plant that I told my husband to, to weed whack one morning because I didn't realize what it was. And, and then on the way to work, I saw a whole patch of them and realized what I'd done. So the next year when it came up, I let it go. And now it's supportive of all kinds of butterflies and bees and moths and every kind of pollinator we have in the yard. So the most important thing you need to know when you're trying to create a backyard habitat is to make sure that you don't use any chemicals, no pesticides, fertilizers, things that could damage not only the terrestrial animals but the underground animals like earthworms. The more that you can work with nature and let things sort of go a little bit, the more that nature will work with you and you'll, you'll have a really prolific, really lush garden in the end.